Cheeksters, hi you two, it's Chi Chi again from Supple Chic. Wow, it's been a minute since I actually sat down and shot a video. Oh my goodness! This it's year has been such a transition for me. Um, I'm gonna be talking more about that in future videos, but that's not why we're here. If we haven't met yet, yes, my name is Chi Chi and we cover fashion, beauty, and lifestyle on this channel. So if that's something you are interested in, then please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. So today's video is going to be all about trends that should, should die and not be resurrected in 2020. Just trends in the culture that need to stay in this decade, okay? Before you hear mine, I wanna know in the comments down below the top three trends that you think should die in this decade, okay? So, without further ado, I don't know why my voice just got raspy all of a sudden, but we're gonna go with it. We're gonna say raspy is the new sexy, okay? Oh, girl, all right. I can't do that. <laughs> so the first trend is kind of fashion related, but not really, that needs to die in this decade is going to be the body worship trend oh my god thanks to the advent of the internet and i guess it was around before but i think having instagram and facebook and just media that's consumable so easily now on our hands in our hands and our phones i feel like it's just been it's just blown up if you're asking Gigi, what do you mean by body worship trend it basically means women idolizing a, a specific type of body and I feel like this is so much more prevalent in the plus size community than it is in the straight size community because I feel like when you're plus size your body's a lot more exaggerated um, and it's just like women idolizing a specific shape of body and that is of course that coke bottle shape you know that you know rappers have made songs about and whatnot you know the tiniest waist the widest hips big boobs big boobs so much tiniest waist widest hips right and I feel like not only has this become a sickness in our community but I feel like marketers have also caught up on it and now they're also using it to get people to buy stuff okay and this relates to me as a fashion channel because I feel like I see a lot of girls who follow girls for certain reasons. She has a tiny waist, her hips are so big. That means if, you know, if that outfit looks like that on her, it must look like that on me. Hell no, girl. I feel like the biggest mistake, the biggest issue that we're having in a plus, plus size community right now is body dysmorphia. Because some people will see something on someone who looks nothing like them and they will go ahead and purchase it and then it will look nothing like that on them. And I feel like it just continues this cycle of hating yourself. It continues this cycle of low self-esteem because women are, are, are idolizing these women that Sometimes their bodies aren't even natural. Like people are going to Brazil, Dominican Republic, and all these crazy places to have ribs removed, to have fat upped out, you know, to have fat added in places. Like, and I'm not, I'm not here to come for getting work done, okay? If you want to get work done, get work done. It's me, okay? I wouldn't mind getting work done in certain places. Um, but I have other goals, and so getting my body worked on is not one of them right now. Um, but the point is I feel like it's so important for women to know themselves know your body type know your shape know what works for you and don't let these marketers lie to you and tell you that if you drink a certain tea you're gonna look like her no she wasn't even born looking like her okay uh, don't let them think oh you know make you feel like oh if I buy this outfit I'm gonna look that cute no and <laughs> I, and I'm actually happy for the, some of the girls who will get home and put on these clothes and they see it doesn't look like them and they don't wear it. And I'm not here to shame anyone for dressing. Wear what makes you feel happy, what makes you feel comfortable, what makes you feel confident, you know. However, don't be borrowing confidence from somebody else, especially if they don't look like you, sis. Yeah. Guys, I'm trying to get to 18,000 followers. I'm almost there. Well. Not really. <laughs> Support your girl, like this video, share it, leave comments down below, engage, all of that good stuff. Don't and do it. All right, I'm gonna drink some of my. All right, so that's the first trend that should die. And some people might agree or may not, but whatever. <laughs> I'm joking, y'all. 
I guess I kind of touched on the next point, which is teas and vitamins that don't work. Sis, people have made a whole fortune, okay, off of these lies that continue to be perpetuated in our culture. All we all want, you know, that uh, 3C, 3B, 3A hair texture. 3B hair length and so we see girls that have these hair textures naturally we see girls that have super long hair and we think and they tell us oh you know I drank this vitamin I eat, ate these blue gummies and now my hair is so long my eyebrows grew out as somebody whose background is in science okay you need to look at your mama <laughs> you need to look at your siblings your cousins you need to look at your genetics, right? There is no amount of tea, no amount of gummy, no amount of vitamins that's going to make you have what you don't have in your genetics. Period. Okay? Period. It's not going to work. Now, will the tea help your hair grow a little bit more? Sure. So not tea. Vitamins, sure, it may stimulate. If you have excess biotin in your system, it may cause for you to produce hair. But remember that this vitamin is indiscriminate which means that it's not just going to make hair grow out on your head it's also going to make hair grow out on your legs hair grow out in your armpits hair grow out in your arms it's going to make your beard fuller or your mustache fuller it's going to make everything grow out and honey if your jeans say you have hair everywhere else but your head the vitamins will cause you to have hair everywhere else and not on your head so please bear that in mind before you start popping vitamins now if you have naturally long hair if that's in your genes then absolutely and i'm not saying that 4c hair girl, girls can't have long hair because there are 4c hair girls with long hair but i'm saying like i have i guess okay length hair um since i've been natural but my hair is kind of thin so it's not like you know those big huge afros that you see all right and so i know there is no amount of tea brah that's good. Oh, I keep calling it a tea. No amount of gummies, bruh. That's going to change too much. Like, it may make my hair slightly fuller, but it's not going to turn me into her, okay? And I know this. And so I just want you guys to stop being fooled in 2020, in the next decade. The same thing that goes for the flat tummy teas. The girl is at the gym eight days a week. Yes, I said eight days a week, okay? She's at the gym eight days a week. Or she went to Brazil, or she went to Dominican Republic, and her uncle or her cousin or her, or her doctor hooked her up. It is not no tea, okay? Okay. All right. The next thing I think is a no is going to be on the makeup side of things and it's going to be th what I call big bird lashes or feather lashes, right? Yo, your lashes should not be touching, should not be covering your eyebrows, okay? I don't know who started this trend. I don't know who, I know everybody wants lashes, but bruh, your eyelashes should not be touching, should not pass your eyebrows. If your eyelashes are even touching your eyebrows, that's a that's a, a that's a no. That that's an exaggeration. Okay, that is beyond an exaggeration. That is an aberration of nature. Okay, yo, you see women with these lashes, and then the worst part is if the lashes are not put on properly. Right, I have said it time and time again. My lash game is extremely weak. I have tried for years to master it and I hear, oh, you gotta just keep doing it and doing it. And I'm just not willing to go outside looking crazy all of the time just to master this trend. And I'm not gonna put lashes on in my house for no reason. So if I'm putting on lashes, it's cause I'm going somewhere, right? And I don't wanna keep going somewhere looking crazy. But y'all, right. y'all continuing on coming for the culture <laughs> maybe that's what i should title this video coming for the culture yes 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 the next thing that needs to die or with this decade is going to be body nudity and pornography okay cloaked in body positivity right i knew that instagram was a beast Okay, I knew that Facebook was a brain when I compared my timeline to a certain member of my family's timeline, right? I never knew that there were girls on Instagram that have private accounts that you had to pay to see them shake their asses at you. 
I came across a girl's account where she is a body positivity advocate and everything she had for every 50 posts, there were two posts with actual clothes on and she's a mom and she's a wife and I'm not knocking her because her account had hundreds and thousands of followers. Um, but, and she's probably making a living off of it. So, but I hate, I really, really hate the fact that people are profiting off of us, basically promoting pornography and nudity and cloaking it in body positivity. Now, if you want to do porn, you're a fully grown adult. Or I hope you are, you know, God has given us all free will to do as we please with our bodies. Go ahead. If you want to be nude, okay, go ahead. But I just, I feel like body positivity, nudity has hijacked that, it has hijacked that um, movement. And I'm 100% against that. Because when I got into blogging, one of the reasons I got into blogging was because of how much the plus size body positivity movement blessed me and helped me learn to have confidence and self-esteem. If you go back to one of my first posts where I posted myself in a bikini, prior to that day, I hadn't worn a bikini in like 10 plus years. I was so ashamed of myself, so ashamed of my body, you know? And so the plus size community really, really helped me find who I was, right? That to me is what body positivity is. It is helping women feel confident and positive about their bodies. You do not have to do that naked, brah. You can absolutely love yourself without putting all of you on the internet and letting other people objectify you. Because I bet you that at least 50, 60, 70% of that girl's followers are men who are probably, you know, masturbating to her photos. And that should not be the goal. You know, low self-esteem is, an, it is a product of society's influence right and that influence stems from the objectification of women right so on the op opposite spectrum you claim or we claim that we're being body positive but we're still allowing ourselves to be objectified so have we really grown are we really positive about ourselves if we still need validation from others to feel good these are the questions that I ask. Y'all, okay. this video has already been so, so long, so woo, let's try and wrap this up. Okay, I got two more points to go. Okay, I get it. I get the hustle is real, the dream and the hustle are sold separately, but brah, it is free webinars that turn into spam. I've had to create a special email address <laughs> for all these free webinars. Because yeah, sometimes I do want that information. But no sis, I don't want you to send me an email every single day. No sis, I don't want you to partner with a fellow you know, webinar partner and sell my email to them and make them harass me every single day. Like, I get it. I know this is how a lot of people, digital preneurs, I know this is how we're making money now. But please be considerate. Be considerate, okay? I, please. Like, one email a week. I don't need to get 10 emails from you. I know you're trying to sell your ebook. I'm not mad. I get it. But please, stop spamming me. Please. Anyways. Guys, <laughs> it's been a crazy decade, y'all. It's been a crazy decade. And I'm super excited, a little scared of what the next decade has in store. Um, but I'm so happy that you are along the ride with me. The next thing that I think needs to die is going to be competition over collaboration, okay? It's been some wise person said two heads are better than one. This is true in marriage, it is true in business. 
I find personally in the in the blogging business sphere, a lot of people say this, oh my God, collaboration over competition, but a lot of people actually live it, okay? A lot of people post online about how, you know, collaboration over competition, but there is so much mess that goes on behind the scenes in the blogging community. And I think we as a group need to get better. We need to get better at cl clicks that form. We need to get better at motivations or intentions. And we need to get better at actually living what we say, which is, you know, collaboration over competition. I'm gonna say, let me speak prophetically. It used to be really hard for me to open up to people, you know? I have seen the blessings that come with bringing people into your circle. Now, on the other hand, there is a negative side because there are a lot of people in blogging, in business, in this blogging business, who only want to friend up, right? They only want to be friends with the people in the t at the top. You know, when you come to them, you want to be friendly, you want to start a community, you know, you want to share things. They're very standoffish about it. Um, unless, oh my God, if you have 100,000 followers, oh come, let's be friends. You know, I remember I met a girl that I had been talking to, uh, like she would comment on my photos, she followed me, we're friends. And so when I met her, or in real life, like I was like super nice, like I waved at her. Yo, this girl like totally snubbed me. And five years ago, Chi Chi would have been like so in her feelings about it. But you know what? I was just like, you know what, for what? Nah. So a few minutes later, I circled around to her at the event and I still said hello. I was like, hey sis, how you doing? We still chatted. Because guess what? She hasn't learned the lesson yet. She'll learn it soon. I want to say there are very few people that I've met in this business that are genuinely just like they are online in person. And I know that I've also been guilty of being standoffish or being snubbish, which is why I didn't take what she did because I was like, maybe she's just like an introvert and quiet. Maybe she doesn't want to be bothered and that's fine. And that's how I approach everybody now because you never know where your blessing is coming from. You never know where that piece of information you need to take your business, your brand, to the next level is coming from all right guys i could keep going on and on don't forget to leave a comment down below with three trends that you think should die in this decade let's continue our conversation down there i'm super curious to see what you guys have to say support your girl like this video share it leave comments down below engage all of that good stuff and for all of you who always leave wonderful comments who always support all of my content i see you trust me it does not go unnoticed and i truly truly appreciate y'all so 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 much and i'm so happy that you guys have been rocking with me the entirety of 2019 and this is where i say um don't forget to rate comment subscribe and share and until but i don't want there to be a next time i want you to come on get comfortable click open that description down below and check out all of my playlists i have a fashion haul playlist I have a styling playlist. If you're looking for autumn and winter or fall and winter outfit ideas, definitely check out that playlist down below. I would absolutely love for you to subscribe if you're not subscribed. And of course, read my blog. So yeah, go get some tea or hot chocolate or whatever you like to sip on. No judgment here. <laughs> um, get some snacks and get comfortable.